Hello again everyone. Uh, it is the next day, my last day here in Saranda, so I decided to go visit uh, the castle, which is pretty much on top of um, the highest elevation here in Saranda. Um, when I was walking around yesterday, I stopped at a couple cafes and I, I asked multiple people if there's one thing I have to see in Saranda with limited time, what would it be? And all the answers I got were check out the castle up here. So that's exactly what I'm doing today. And so um, I just got here. This is the parking lot. The view is already great, so I still have a little bit more elevation to go. So I'm going to go check out the castle right now. What's really neat about this, uh, at the entrance of the castle, they have um, all these old, authentic um, machine, guy, machine gun um, type things that were probably used in the help of the defense of this castle. So there's like a big cannon over there, like a, um, kind of like a, a machine gun of some sort. I'm not really much into um, war weapons at all, but, um, these seem kind of just like um, things to uh, projectiles, whether it's missiles or machine guns or something. And they're, they're very well preserved. So this is right at the entrance of it, which is kind of neat as well. Hey, I'm yet to find out too much history about this place, but it seems, or it appears to me, that they've turned this into a restaurant or a cafe. Um, and it's not as much of a historical area, but um, I think it's kind of neat right now. I mean, it's in the mid-afternoon and there's hardly anybody here, and you could definitely get um, a good place to sit just overlooking the entire city over there of Saranda. Uh, the views are just amazing here, so I, I actually think it was a great idea to uh, build a cafe or a restaurant here. Uh, you have the islands off to the left, um, which I believe one of those is Corfu, which is the Greek island. Um, and there is a ferry going to that island. And then on this side, you have the, basically the main city of um, Saranda. So it, it's the whole stretch of um, resorts hotels, apartments, flats, um, that kind of go into these um, islands, and it's almost like a channel of uh, water going from the cove here to the Ionian Sea over there, um, and the water is just, you know, Albanian water, so it's kind of just like in Vlor and Honduras, where it's just that crystal clear um, water once you get up close to it, but uh, far away, um, you have that deep blue look to it, and it, which makes for an excellent um, overview, or an overlook rather, um, in both directions. And then right in the center, you have another Greek island. So uh, the area is just absolutely gorgeous, although it's pretty windy up here right now, so I'm not sure how much of this you're actually hearing, but 
Um, it's just beautiful up here and I'm gonna continue exploring a little bit more. I kind of found a road that's leading off the side of the restaurant, or the castle rather. Um, I think this leads into the parking lot, but you get more amazing views here. Um, the reason I'm coming down here is because I wanted to get a photo of the city of Saranda back over there, but there's a really poorly positioned um, like a cell tower or radio uh, tower right in the middle. I know I could probably fix that in post, but I want to try getting uh, the best picture possible here. And I want to get a different vantage point. So I'm just going to go over past the toilets here. Which, yes, there is toilets here. Doesn't seem like I'm going to be able to get a picture from here. But... I think if I keep looking, I'll be able to find a space to go. found a spot without the, the giant tower, which you can't see, it's just behind those trees over there. Instead, I have a, a neat little foreground picture of this tree, which I can just put in the corner of my image. And um, it looks uh, makes for a lot more of a natural photo um, than having a big, big antenna going through the center of your frame. So now I can kind of use that tree right here and pick up all of this of the entire city of Saranda. So, um, just kind of walk off the beaten path a little bit if you want a, a great picture um, because that's the, really the best way um, to go about doing it like I said you could probably get away with photoshopping you know antennas and things like that out but um, nonetheless I mean just go for a different vantage point you're gonna see a different part of the city anyway so yeah let's keep voyaging Outside the castle now and the other side of the parking lot. It's very windy right now so I hope this audio isn't too horrible. Uh, but this is right at the beginning, one of the main pillars of the castle. Um, I wanted to show the bunker because is it really an Albanian um, historical site without a bunker or two? Um, so you'll see them all over the place. I just kind of wanted to go to this other this other parking lot for a different vantage point um, and I'm glad I did it's just everything here is beautiful
more bunkers. <laughs> and a great, great view of the south end of Saranda. So, this is facing south right now. All this area along here is south. So, um, Saranda is basically right on the border of Greece and Albania. I don't mean right on the border. I would say, you know, there's within 50 to 100 kilometers of Greece. Uh, but that's not very far when you're at a vantage point like this. So like I was saying before, that's a Greek island over there. Um, and I'm pretty sure all of those islands that you can see in the distance right over there are all Greek islands as well. Uh, so it just kind of flows right into um, uh, Greece over there um, by way of the Ionian Sea. And this is the very end of the Ionian Sea, um, which is fed by the Adriatic Sea, which you'll see in vlogs that I've done in Duras and even in Vlora. And Vlora is kind of the midway point of where the Adriatic meets the Ionian Sea. Um, well, this is where the Ionian Sea meets the Mediterranean Sea. So the Mediterranean Sea is just off in the distance. So these seas fill the Mediterranean, um, which I hope to see. I will see someday. Um, it's kind of one of those bucket lists for me of wanting to see the Mediterranean Sea. Um, so this is about as close as I've ever come to it. Um, one thing I'm kind of disappointed in is the, the lack of information here. Uh, there's no information whatsoever. No placards, posters, anything describing what uh, this castle is or what it was used for or how old it is if it ever actually got used if it was ever actually under attack Now I'm saying this as I'm actually Filming the video here um, Obviously, I'll go and try to do some research online and see if there's any information and and kind of speak over uh, the video a little bit to tell you that information, but as of right now, I haven't seen anything. Um, why this castle exists, why it's here, um, what the historical significance of this place is. Don't get me wrong, it's beautiful. It's beautiful ruins. I just like to know more about it. Uh, but that's pretty much it. This is the second parking lot here, um, and I'm gonna call it quits. Um, I'm heading to a new city as we speak. I have to meet with the Airbnb host in couple hours. Oh, get run over. So I'm heading to my next city. It's going to be one of my first cities other than Tirana that uh, isn't a coastal city for once, but it's a very historical city. So I can't wait to um, make videos of that city. So you'll have to uh, Stay tuned and watch where I end up next. But if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching once again. I hope you got a, a little idea of what it would be like um, visiting here, the castle. Um, and so, uh, thank you so much. As I'm filming this outro or the end of this video, I'm actually seeing a sign right above there. But it's the entrance to this place and there is information on the castle so i'm going to go check that out now i'll speak over the top um i'll show you a little bit of the text so um good thing there is history here obviously i just wanted to know more about it so once again if you made it this far thank you so much for watching uh thank you for your continued support and i look forward to uh, making more videos in the future so have a great day everyone bye the Lakers Castle, situated between the ruins of the village Lakers, abandoned in 1878 on top of a high hill that rises in the shape of a pyramid. The castle layout almost 42 by 44 square meters with two rectangular towers on the western wall. From the towers that, on, that are on the southeast corner is better preserved which has an altitude of about 7 meters in height that reaches the floor of the second floor. The rectangular tower is located on the western wall. The first floor 
The circular towers served as warehouses and are equipped with turrets located approximately 120 meters apart. From the tower's position, it is clear that the direction of the control tower was the sea. The walls are built with limestone, linked with mortar and reinforced, reinforced with wooden bands. The walls reach up to about 7 meters in thickness and 2 meters in height. The walls are surrounded by a parapet depicted with turrets for cannons covered with horizontal stones. The turrets have a height of about half a meter and internally and externally about half a meter. The turret at the top covered with stone slabs positioned horizontally. Those crossing the parapets on the walls are not so typical for firearms. They are larger than used for turrets of Ali Pasha of Te Tepelina. The above techniques are similar to those houses of the 17th and 18th century in Geocaster's castle, carrying a garrison of about 200 soldiers and its construction belongs in the middle of about the 16th century and the possibility of construction in about 1537 when Sultan Suleiman attacked Corfu and was necessary controlled Saranda scaffolding and the road to Bertrand, which was occupied by the Venetians.